my workbench has become a push one project aside to make room for the next. But there's no good timing for this. This is the heat exchanger. And I need to know what's going on in there so I can order parts tonight. So we're going to pull this thing apart and see what's going on inside of here. See if it looks good or if anything needs to be replaced. Here's a tear that a grief from runners, ships that sail from velvet harbors, cruise that broke a chug and poured your blood like blowing around my bond of sand. Sinking down, 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 into the sand upon the sea. Here's a tale of a long flute playing Those might hang if my time was slain Here's a cup of blood and tears And here's a wheel of a hundred years Turn it down, down, down Upon the sand, upon the sea On the hills of liquid green There's your hose rise again And the dreams that it sails in the wind All of these two bundles go straight through. Every two bundle goes straight through, like to be seen just straight through. So that's just a matter of maybe running a pipe cleaner or something through them. Because of the angles on these things, the water is forced through one direction and back through and then back through and then out. So, so you need the gaskets on both ends. Yeah, I need these gaskets for both ends and I probably need these O-rings. I want to pull one out and see what's going on in here. Taste of the great rum runners, ships that sail from velvet harbors and crews that broke the jump, pulled your blood like flowing rum upon the sand. Down and down, down and down, until the dreams are touching ground. See that little hole right there? Make sure you put the heat exchanger back together with that in the exact same location. Its purpose is to let the air bubble escape so the tubes are completely surrounded by antifreeze. We missed this step the first time and had to fix it. Here's a tale of a long flute playing. Those might hang if my time was slain. Here's a cup of blood and tears and here's a way. Here's a tale of bloody slaughter written on the leagues of water. Here's a tale of singing. I've been singing down, singing down, 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 till the dreams are touching ground. Rising up like a rain, rising, falling, rise again in the dreams. All right. 
I'm going to take this in the house and kind of flush out and see if I can't use a uh, toothbrush or something just to kind of clean out some of the lightweight gunk that's in there. Here's a taste of the great rum runners, ships that sail from velvet harbors and crews that broke the jump, pulled your blood like flowing rum upon the sand. Down and down, down and down, until the dreams are touching ground. If that's what 23 years worth of corrosion did to that thing, I think we're good for a couple hundred more. So we're looking good and we're going to put it back together happy and knowing exactly what's going on inside of our heat exchanger. Alright, so I got a whole bunch of new parts here. <clears throat> Here's my seals for the exchanger. So, here we go. <laughs> parts that need to go back into the engine. She's going to be pretty. She's all cleaned up. We're going to attempt to put it back together today in a successful sort of way. Attempt. <laughs> We're going to succeed. And all hands that could not sink or swim, they was just left at a float.
I also replace the seals for the timing and crankshafts. Just pop the old ones out, clean the surfaces and push the new ones back in. Make sure to keep the new seals straight as you push them in to avoid future leaks. Look inside here. You see what I'm doing? See this little lever? See this little lever? See the little fork that my finger's on? Right up at the top? Okay, look at this. This little pin has to go in that fork. So, I'm going to align it kind of in the middle to get it in here, and when I start dropping it in, you need to go like this with your finger and make that pin fall in that fork. Do not drop that inside of there. Can you maneuver it? Yep, just like that. So, it's going to get darker as I drop this thing in from the top. So if I put the screws on here and tighten it down now, it might go. Is the pin in the forks like this? Or it will if I tighten it down? Tightening the bolts to what is it, 18 foot pounds? Yeah, 18 foot pounds is what it calls out on these M8 bolts. Say goodbye. 
my baby I'll die for them. This is the high pressure fuel lines. Before we hooked up that hole? Yeah. Yeah, well. Well, before we put the, the header tank on. Really? Um, this goes over here. There. Are you getting closer, anyways? Um, close. I remember this one was the hardest one to get in. There. There. That one goes in, that one goes in. And that one's close enough. And this one is in. Okay. Close enough. So let's just um, hold those there for a second. Let me get these tightened down. Hooking up the fuel lines to the injectors. To the injectors. I'm gonna put them on too tight. We're gonna have to bleed them anyway. Once yeah, we'll we bleed them here. Start the engine again. We'll bleed them here. We'll tighten these guys up. Oh right. Oh, all right. I see. We'll bleed them on the return side so that it doesn't. Right, so because air the air goes. comes out the back side then. Right. right. Bit of a bugger. Is it all the way back on the other part? So I'm going to tighten this guy down, thinking that this is where he can stay. Doesn't have to come to you. I'm sparing you so you can tell the rest what you've been through. You're a good. I sure like having the video to go back to to figure out where we put the damn thing. is I just pull this thing down so it tensions that belt. Yeah. 
I'm going to put the torque wrench on it just to make sure. Okay, that should be good there. And down it's just barely enough to get it on though that'll work then I can raise this up and tension it in here first so that I can okay okay tighten it down Like lay on top of the alternator like that and it bite does. the snot out of it. It does. Really? Yep. It's kind of yucky. No, it's not a perfect it look world. Look like it's worn though. No, it's not a perfect world we live in, but that's that guy. You want those covers to be up and on solid. Good. Can you hear it? I can hear air coming out, yep. That's what I want. Well, I'm hearing less air coming through here. Give it a squeeze. <gasps> stop, stop. That's it. Okay. Well, we're full to fuel to there, that's for sure. Do it again, a longer bump. Really? Yep. Do it again. That's good. Do it again. All right, give me like a five second bump. Yep. Okay, here I go. Keep going. Again. Again.
one, okay. take a break and just breathe. breathe. What happened was two of the cylinders fired and the third one wasn't, so I cranked it open. That's why it was running really weird. I cranked it open and let it and let it bleed through until that filter, until the fuel got all the way in there into the third cylinder. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Now I'm just installing the air filter, and then this time oh, when we started, Bacchus we wanted is over there watching us. What? Bacchus is over there watching us. He said, "Good job." When uh, this time. It ain't Honey, yeah. this time when it starts, we want to see water coming out the bag. So just let it run till I see well, water. Well, I'm going to check for leaks and stuff here. Well, take a walk around the thing and see if we've got any spits going on. That seal looks good. Okay, let's start it up and run it until the water's coming out, so then we'll know that all that's good. Ready? Yep. It should fire pretty normally. Okay, ready? Ready. We're celebrating because the engine runs. Hmm. Perfect. Ah, <gasps> she's back together. The baby runs. Says the captain. Bottoms up. That is good stuff for a shot. It is good stuff. Holy cow. All right. Oh yeah, it only took two weekends. Two weekends to do, so that was better a than Saturday, we thought. A Saturday, a Sunday, and a Saturday, and a Sunday, and we're better than we thought. Apart and fixed and back together again. One click at a time. Wow, we're like racing along here. <laughs> Turbo. David is laying on the engine. Trying to unscrew a, what is that, an exhaust bolt? Yep. Yep. Oh good. You get to put them back in. Oh good, thanks. That'll be great. Gotta have little hands, Mark. Yeah, this would work way better if I had little hands. If I was like 5 foot 2 and 110 pounds. <laughs> Where did I get rooked into this? I'll be the cinematographer. Somebody said it was supposed to be easier putting it together than taking it apart. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I ain't believe in any of it. Well, when it was put together to begin with, it, wasn't, it wasn't in, in the, the boat. boat. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Or it didn't have the cabinetry around it. Ha ha ha, and you thought the crankshaft pulley was the hard part. Ha 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 He says <clears throat> with glee. You haven't got the cover off yet. <laughs> David's looking for one of his, he lost one of his nuts and bolts. Hey! <laughs> David's <laughs> losing his nuts. <laughs> nice going, Mark. <laughs> it's not in there. It is too. It's cool, it's sitting right on top. He's trying to get a washer out. Did, did you find it in the bucket? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what's it doing in there? You put it in there. The rear exhaust is loose now. Oh, uh, don't be talking about my rear exhaust. Okay. <laughs> Ow! Just kidding. <laughs> Turkey. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Putz. <laughs> you made a kill him. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> uh.
I knew you couldn't let it happen. I couldn't. I couldn't. I had to. I had to. Jerk.